Hey there. Thank you so much for watching or listening to The Climb. This is John Siracus, and this is brought to you by The Digital Mastermind. Today, we we got to speak to uh, on one of my favorite subjects, right? I love movies and I love like the idea of marketing movies. I don't and I have never really marketed a movie myself, but we got to speak to a gentleman that has I think he's number two in the number of either posters he's created or, or trailers you're going to have to watch to, to find out. But it was chock full of just fun insights based on one of my favorite things, movies. And in that, there was a lot of you know marketing tidbits and things about the industry that I, I think that you'll find interesting. But before we get into that, Dave, why don't you come out here and join us? Hey, how's it going? It's going good. So I, I know I get a little bit almost like fanboy when it comes to movies and, and making because, and I, and, I, and I say it in there, I, one of my ways to unplug, right, everybody has their different methods of rest is at the end of the day, I go home and I watch movie trailers, right? That's how I know the day is ending. I don't check my phone anymore. And there's usually anywhere from like two to three, sometimes 20 minutes of, of movie trailers. But, and with that. Just trailers, not, not just, actual movies. Just trailers. Yeah, it's great because it's what I love about it is it's this short snippet that's designed to tell a quick story and get you to act and get excited. So you go and see that movie. So I, I don't know. I, I can't think of anything more enjoyable in that short two and a half minutes that uh, that would help me rest than than my movie trailers. And I've been doing it for like 10 years. So speaking of movie trailers, one of the things that kind of irks me lately, and it's been going on probably for 10 plus years, you know, me and the wife sit down, we're, it's Friday, Saturday night, we're ready to watch a movie, we start watching the trailer. If within 15 seconds, we think, hey, we're, we're going to like this, one of us will yell, all right, stop, stop it, stop it, I don't want to, because previews now tell you everything, they give away the entire story, and it just, if you watch the whole thing, you're no longer surprised. And some so do, some, uh, yeah, but none of them are going to do the sixth sense and tell you I see dead people, right, uh, and, and, and ruin the, the, the movie for you. But I, I agree. I mean, there, there are some that, that do it across the board. But there's, there's many movies where I'm sitting there going, oh, this looks like it's a bad situation. But, you know, in the preview, there's that scene where they're like, you know, celebrating. So I know it's, they're not going to die. You know, so it's like, I, I don't want to have that during a movie, you know. So I, I think it should be previews used to be made to trick you and i guess that pissed people off too but but then you would get into a movie and be super pleasantly surprised i love watching a movie when i've seen the trailer and i was like oh i can't wait for this scene to come up <sighs> yep That's i want exciting. i want movie trailers to be more like our proposals where it gives you a teaser of what you're going to get but at the end you're just so pleasantly surprised with the project <laughs> There's like, so wow. much work that goes into before that proposal. They've already seen the movie. So <laughs> there is no trailer from by that point. But uh, in, in, in speaking along those lines, uh, there's uh, I, I love the, the, the pieces, and we talk about this um, in, in the podcast, where they would put it in the trailer and you never see that scene in the movie. Oh, yeah. The, the film just for the trailer. Yep. Yeah. I think Marvel... Uh, I think Marvel has been doing a little bit of that lately. Oh, and I, yeah, I, I know it's been going on for years. I want to say Star Wars is the first one that I noticed doing that when they when they came out with the original new ones, uh, like in the early 2000s. They had scenes that um, it was some cult classic film. And if it wasn't Star Wars, then it might have been Lord of the Rings. But they would, would pack the trailer full of scenes that aren't even in the movie. What was the best trailer you've ever seen? God, don't we ask this in the interview? Yeah, you're right. I, I, after, I, after I even said it, I was like, did, did we already talk about that? I just love talking about it so much that I was I was going to get into it again. The scariest trailer. Oh, the scariest. Here we go. Well, I mean, because that's the, I mean, I was just thinking of like emotional impact. The one that I instantly think of is um, Pet Cemetery. Hmm. It's scary. That being a scary trailer. It's out of me. As really? A yeah. I remember it being a scary movie. Yeah. Just the opening of that movie. I remember. So. We had a bunch of friends over. I was like five years old. And the way that our house is, we had a big screen TV at the end, you know, couches on the side and kind of like a long hallway right to the room. And we got KFC. And so everybody's get, making their plates. I was the first one done with the plates, the movie starting and the opening scene. And I'm just kind of walking slowly towards the TV. And if you remember the opening scene, it's scary. It's just I don't real, remember it. real creepy music and 
the red letters and somebody came up behind me and you know gave me a jolt and boom Kentucky Fried Chicken everywhere <laughs> Yeah. All right. That's scary from something external. Yeah. Right? yeah. Well, it set the tone. It yeah. got me where, you know, they wanted me to be. And I mean, along those lines, Adam, Adam uh, Waldman, our guest, I, you know, probably should, you know, say his name. Fantastic guy. Does the, the, the posters too, though. Oh. And posters have sold me where I didn't even, I didn't see the tra- trailer as a kid. And you see, you know, essentially the actors that are going to be in it and it, mm-hmm. and it, and it pulls you in. And along those lines, I've seen some really terrible posters that there's there's nothing there that I want to see. It's almost like a bad podcast cover, which I think we have a pretty good one. Um, so, like you like the trailers. What I like in, in, in posters, too, but when you're at the movie theater and they have the cardboard cutouts or they have, you know, the uh, the big posters. Yeah. And what I love about it is you see the stuff that's coming in six months, not just in a month, because trailers you typically only see like when it's about to come out. No, I mean, they'll show those things sometimes. Yeah, like uh, it's ready, but, yeah, you know, a year in advance. The trailer is ready. For the most part, it's not being pounded on you know um, media until it's like a month out or sixty days out. But yeah, I just love. I'm like, ooh, you know, hey, but Keanu Reeves is going to be in a movie next year. Awesome. That's is that where I call? used to. That's that's where I used to find out about those. I mean, I haven't been in a movie theater in three years now. It seems like. Yeah, it's it's been quite some time. Yeah, I just uh, I had some AMC billing that I had to shut off the other day. Uh, they like just fired it back up after COVID, and uh, yeah, it started hitting me for twenty five uh, bucks again. But you said Keanu Reeves, so is that your draw? Like based on certain actors, like oh, Keanu Reeves is in that. I know it's going to be good because sometimes that's a sign of quality. Well, just like I mentioned in the interview, I, I and he you know uh, gets me on it. Uh, I won't watch a movie without at least one quality actor in it, and. And he and he rips me in the interview for that. So, uh, <laughs> um, but I'm just I'm so tired of like now in the age of streaming, where you have access to so much content. I really had to set up in you know for me some kind of quality checklist before I even clicked on the link because, you know, when I first got access to the Netflixes and the and the Amazon videos, you know, there was so much content that I'd be like, ooh, that looks good. And you know, we talk in the interview that he designs those. Uh, you know, yeah. images, and they switch them out to try to get you to click on them. And and uh, I ended up wasting so much time consuming shitty movies. Like, it, But you watch a- the whole thing? No. Oh, all right. But still, you're still wasting time. It's like a friend minutes. of mine. He'll read. He's like, oh, I'm reading the worst book. I was like, well, then put it down. He's like, <laughs> oh, well, no, I, I, I start a book. I have to finish it. I'm like, dude, that's that's like the tor- most torture I could ever think of. Like, I mean, some people hate reading bad enough. Even if you enjoy reading and the book sucks, you're going to see it all the way through. So right. my, I'm watching a movie. Instantly, if there's any bad acting, like there's shows. I'm not going to name the shows because some people love them. If I see even a hint of that, I'm like, done. I don't care right. what the story is. The only thing you have to do is mainly get that part right, and that part fails. Yeah. But what yeah. about if there's really good acting and just one bad actor? Uh, sometimes I'll make, uh, uh, of course, I'll you know complain about it to whoever's in the room. But yeah, sometimes I'm trying. I'm trying to think of. There was this show. All right, it was called American Gods. Right. Everybody was you know my friends were like oh you got to see this show. And it had a Ian McShane. That guy's awesome. Like, dude, yeah. that, that guy that guy could play anybody, right? I love him in Kings. Yeah. The lead role in this film, this guy was terrible. It was like, I remember my first movie or I remember my first show. It was just it was sad. And did you couldn't do it. Did you watch the it was a big Netflix movie last year? It had like Al Pacino, uh, just like all the old school Italian gangster actors. Um God, yeah. Robert De Niro. Robert De Niro, and there's even even another one. That yeah. was in it. it's based on the book I Paint Houses, but I can't think of the the name. Yeah, so either way, I, I didn't like it. I thought the acting was kind of bad. It's when they did the CGI over Robert De Niro's face, and they made him look young, right? I, yeah, I think so. Yeah, and maybe that's what threw me off. I, I just it, it was when, everyone was talking about it. I was like, this is long. It's boring. Yeah, I like that movie. I I thought it was good. I thought it was a good story, and it, it had to do with Jimmy Hoffa, right? Mm-hmm. The one part though is where Robert De Niro takes so he beats up some guy and he's kicking him 
it's like, dude, like, I mean, I, I didn't go back to, to watch it, but I remember thinking like, yeah, that looks like there's a seven year old guy, you know, kicking. You know, <laughs> right. I mean, right. it doesn't look like somebody that's young a double in there. You know? right. Yeah. They, they did not have a kick double or, or whatnot, right. but and I guess another thing that we should say before, you know, uh, we get into this is how different his industry is based on most of the people that are in our audience and most agencies that we speak to. It's one of my biggest takeaways was you're only as good as your next job. Okay. And it's like, boom, boom, boom. There's no contracts for the most part in, in what he said. So I think based on, you know, his body of work and what he's doing and a lot of what's said in here, some people can take some things away from that and just find a comfort and not knowing what the next job looks like. I mean, we, I mean, look, at, to some degree, every, every industry is kind of like that because if we fail or if we do a shitty job, you know, our next client is not going to be able to go ask, you know, for a referral. So I mean, we kind of in a roundabout way got to keep building. I know, but it's not off. as it's not the same. Yeah. It's, he's in a small pond, yeah. right? And everything is super visual. Like it's, it's front and center. And he was key to set, describe it in, a, in, I think, a perfect way. It's a close circuit uh, industry. You know, it's, it, it, you, you know, once you have a bad reputation, you're out. Yep. So. All right. Without any further ado, I think we bring in our guest, Adam Waldman. Everybody, if, before we do that, though, if you get a chance, go ahead and like, comment, share this show anywhere that uh, you can. It's greatly appreciated. And thank you so much for either watching or listening. Adam, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. All right, man. So I'd like to start out with your climb. How did you get here? Uh, I am uh, an art director at, at heart, a designer, um, and uh, did not go to school for it. But while I was in school at college, I uh, was an aspiring filmmaker, or so I thought and made a couple of student films and they were horrible and unwatchable and and just brutal to get through the process of making but it's also very addictive and exciting and i'm i'm a film fan uh in my core and i made a poster a couple posters for my little projects and those took like a day and were amazing and are amazing and strong but i i I could hold those up and be like, yeah, that's my movie. Don't see my movie, but that <laughs> poster, yes. Uh, and so that was sort of an aha moment for me. And um, it took me a couple of years after graduation to um, self, to, to teach myself uh, the basics. And I happened to uh, begin my career at that pivotal moment in history that those of us uh, of a certain age, uh, either lived through um, or came before, where uh, it was the beginning of uh, the Mac owning uh, graphic design. And so I came in as uh, a computer nerd. I just, I taught myself Photoshop inside and out. And it was at a moment where the generation before me did not know how to use computers. Um, they were coming from a very analog place. And so I became the wrist essentially of uh, some amazing creative directors before me. And that was my, my education. So I did uh, three years at an agency called BLT. Um, my little corner of the universe, my industry uh, is, is fairly distinct from uh, advertising and creative as you guys may know it. Um, I certainly don't understand uh, the world of advertising, even though it's what I do. Um, I, I, I am good friends with some of your previous um, interviewees and they speak a language I don't speak. So I'm happy to, 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 to talk about my language with you guys. Um, <laughs> But it is different. It is very different. Um, and so so our little ecosystem has probably like 15 agencies. It's a very sort of closed loop. Uh, a lot of uh, traditional ad agencies have tried to get involved over the years. 
they just think differently than we do and it doesn't translate that well. Uh, even though, you know, they've got the skill set in the same way that I have the skill set to work for any brand. Um, but it also works in the reverse where uh, when we have tried to present to brands outside of our industry, um, it doesn't always work that well. And I can get into why. Yeah. Uh, why? What is that difference? It's like so uh, yeah. like McCain will try to come into your space and then they just flame out. Yeah, because. Um, uh, so for those in your audience who are interested in taking a deeper dive, there uh, are a couple of other. There's a podcast called Trailer Geeks and Teaser Gods uh, that is hosted by um, a guy who used to be a major headhunter in our industry, in my in my industry. And um, so he interviews a lot of the old timers, the uh, business owners who've been around for a while. And so one of the episodes, uh, he talks to a man named Joel Wayne, who used to be uh, working in Madison Avenue, on Madison Avenue uh, in like the 50s and 60s, came out to Hollywood and he had been an art director, creative director at an agency. And so he brought that sensibility to his job at Warner Brothers um, and invented or created an agency within Warner Brothers. And that model has sort of stuck. So he uh, outsourced his designers and kept this sort of creative direction to himself. Uh, and our industry still works that way to, to, to this day where my clients are, uh, they separate marketing and creative services. So my client base is the creative services group uh, and they have their own sort of creative direction um, that I interface with. So when I present, uh, I'm presenting 20, 30, 50, 100 unique designs that are completely separate from each other it's a volume game. It's how much creativity can I bring to bear? How, you know, how many different versions can I share that, uh, you know, hit them with a massive shotgun blast of options where they start to, to, to peel it apart internally at the studio and come back to me and go, okay, these, these four directions are working. Let's develop these. Um, how thick is your skin? Very. There, <laughs> it's it's yeah no for sure for sure it's a lot of because they don't know what they're looking for until they see it and if they don't see it you know they'll they'll tell me about it <laughs> um like um, the, like i'm sure and i've heard stories right of some of the people that work in hollywood is it like the just venom and vitriol that comes out on sometimes no 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 these are these are because it's not this is not i mean once upon a time sure yeah uh, i think i think that the landscape that landscape has changed in hollywood as well as everywhere in the country and the world um it's not really acceptable anymore and um you know it, it's it, it's no different than it is for any of us. It's, it's high pressure for them. It's high pressure for me. Um, so, so, you know, it, 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 it's a challenge. It gets tense sometimes, but we we're in it together. Yeah, no name uh, calling, so to speak. Yeah, no, 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 no. I mean, it's happened to me in the past, but, but those people have weeded themselves out. <laughs> Um, what so, does yeah. that do to your team, though? So let's say that you have uh, you, you're doing this, right? Is there that they, they feel like Sisyphus pushing that rock up the the, the mountain? They can. Um, I think I think the the equation there that um, the 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 two directions there, the two extremes are on the one hand, you've got the small indie films, which really don't have the budget to roll that large or go that deep. Uh, don't have the timelines, uh, don't have the assets. So those tend to happen more quickly and kind of get there and done. But the prestige of those in terms of, I'm gonna see my work all over the world. I'm gonna see my work up in Times Square. I'm gonna see my work driving down the street doesn't happen at that level. At the other extreme, you've got a Marvel movie or, or you know, any big tentpole. So I don't want to pick on Marvel. Uh, it's any tentpole. I want to pick that, on Marvel. Um, I mean, <laughs> you can get. I mean, 
we get over 2,000 designs for one movie. Whoa. Can I, so, can I pick on Marvel for you know, a second? So that's that, you know, you talk about the Sisyphus piece. Yeah, you are you are grinding for a year and a half on the same movie. But you get, you know, you're, you did Black Widow. You know, you can tell your friends and family that you survived, you know. So I got a question for you. Um, yeah. I believe that the comic book takeover of Hollywood has destroyed Hollywood. The the create like there's no original ideas coming, and once they run out of comic book stories, hmm. that's gonna be real lonely in Hollywood. And Adam, you don't have to answer that because we understand these are all your employers. So. <laughs> no, no, I mean I will answer it because because I'm gonna put it right back on you and say <laughs> you don't go to the movies that aren't big comic book movies. Oh yeah, I'm gonna guess. <laughs> I'm gonna guess you only go to the big comic book movies. And you're you're tired of them or whatever, and you don't go to the small indie dramas, and so I don't blame Hollywood. I blame the public's taste is has shifted over time, and they're not interested. They're like, I'll catch it on Netflix. Well, um, there's that too. There's definitely that too. I I don't go to any of the comic book movies, and I've barely watched any of them because. And that's coming from a comic book collector. You know, sure. I used to used to collect them all the time, yeah. but the original storylines. The creative story. I just felt like the eighties. Just the eighties and nineties had so much more create creative movies. Uh, that seventies. Uh, seventies are seventies awesome. too. You could say that too. Yeah. But I mean, like Goonies and sure, uh, Short Circuit and Terminator and you know, like just absolutely, absolutely. And I'll also fight you on that because you're picking out the five movies of every year that you loved sure. and sticks in your brain, and they're still being made, and you're still seeing them now. It's just you're in the moment, so you're catching all the other movies as sure. they come out that you're like, that's a piece of crap. I don't want to see that. What was your, what was your uh, latest, greatest film? Uh, latest, greatest film. Um, we Well, let me, let me change the subject and answer the question. Uh, through the pandemic, the bulk of our client base has been the streamers you know, as, as, as the theatrical market has been relatively shuttered, um, we have uh, leaned in on our client base uh, at Netflix, Hulu, Amazon, uh, Apple, all of, all of the streamers have, have um, been our bread and butter. Sure. And so um, what are some of the latest ones? Uh, on Disney Plus, uh, Mysterious Benedict Society, um on hulu uh nine perfect strangers is going up right now so those of you in new york that's coming online in the next couple of weeks um uh you know it's funny i, I we do we do a huge volume of of work we do hundreds uh, a year um and have several thousand uh under our belts in 15 years so it's a it's a tricky question. If if you pull up, if you if you sh screen share Netflix or Amazon or Hulu, I can say I did that. I did that. You know, like Jack Ryan or that know. was excellent. My my mind is a blank. Right? Yeah, the first season was. Second season, no way. Yeah, but I still enjoyed it. Yeah. Which all right? So greatest movie of all time since we're talking movies. Which, in greatest movie of all time. I don't know. You know, you know, you, you 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 call back to the ones of your youth and the things that stuck and 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 stuck out over time and and had the biggest impact on you. Um, so, you know, uh, for me, it's the Mad Max series or the Blade Runner or Blade oh, yeah. Runner, which again, Excellent. you know, isn't necessarily the greatest storytelling of all time, but it's so beautiful and it just holds up over time in a way that very few films do. Um, you know, Mad Max Fury Road, just, I, I still watch pieces of that just because it's so beautiful and, and yet such a, a amazing piece of filmmaking. Uh, those are random ones. Yeah, that's that's no. my mood today. No, <laughs> that's cool, that's cool. And when usually when people get stumped on that question, I always say, all right, if you can't answer that, what is a movie that you could have continually playing in the background at almost at all times and you wouldn't be upset about it? Sure, I, I would. I would pick the same answer probably. I would, I would probably say that. 
All right. So as far as like talk about your agency, like, so uh, yeah. how big is your agency? We are uh, up and down around 150. Um, and that's split between uh, print, uh, which is probably two thirds uh, in the print group uh, and AV, which does movie trailers and uh, TV promo and motion graphics and title design and uh, our digital group, which uh, handles um, uh, social and paid media. Um, so this is all, uh, we're a creative boutique. We don't do media buying. We don't do placement. We don't uh, do any of that. So, you know, I don't really consider us a digital agency in the same sense, again, that, that probably a lot of your listeners would. Yeah. The and the, the trailer is, is something that's like, I get a little fanboy and like super interested. Yeah. It's something it's it's how I reset my day. Like at the end of the day, I I, I watch movie trailers. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, you are second most of any other agency in creating posters and trailers. Posters for sure. Uh, we're number three, uh, but that's over for for sort of uh, collectively. I think you know, the, the hot shop ebbs and flows, uh, through the years. Uh, but again, we're a pretty closed loop as an industry. So we're, we're, you know, top five of, again, of 15 to 20 major players. And then, you know, another 50 beyond that, that are smaller players, uh, on the trailer side. Um, uh, we're, we're, uh, uh, more of an up and coming agency where we're the, the clients that know us, love us and use us a lot. Um, and it's an interesting thing that I think some of your, uh, well, I don't know. I, I would, I would throw it back and, and ask you guys, you know, when you, when you have different distinct uh, business units or deliverables, um, it's tricky because different clients know you as something, as a specialist in something different. And again, in my industry where the, the creative director is, is in-house, uh, is your client, um, they tend to want to outsource to a specialist in print, to a different specialist in, in trailers, to a different specialist in digital and, and social or, um, you know, whatever piece of it. So, they're depending on who who the client is. A lot of times they're like, "Well, you're really good at at, at posters, so I'm going to go somewhere else for the trailers." You know, yep. Um, it's branding. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That gets stuck in their mind. I, I had a client for years. They, uh, they 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 had. I came in their office one time and I pitched them something else, and I, I fixed something on their email. Never did anything in email in my entire life. In their phones, it said John the email guy. Yeah, it was just it's like, dude, I'm not even. I, I don't know anything yeah. about your outlook. I was just, I just followed the prompts. So we had a big client that um, felt the same way, but the reason why they wouldn't use us for the other services is because they they were afraid that a little bit of our focus would be taken off the thing that we're already handling for them so well, and mm -hmm. they didn't want to risk that at all. And which is crazy, but right. uh, and, and another thing that you know you kind of hinted on that I wanted to bring up is one of our other guests from like I don't know twenty episodes ago, as a strategy said, and our account manager does this is put whatever you want to happen with your clients in your email signature, That's and it. like John adds, you know, hey, watch my podcast. Our account manager says, hey, we're much more than web dev, and just every and they just get hit with that constantly, and eventually they're going to look down and go, wait. Uh, we need something more than just web dev. So. Right. Yeah. yeah. No, that's that's definitely it. And uh, again, we have um, specialists in each of these fields. Mine is print, so that's what you'll hear me talking about most because I speak that language best. Um, even though my agency does all of it, um, but that's that's the tricky thing because uh, it's it's hard for me to um sell uh with integrity av for myself as a creative as a as a as a creative um you know 
a client will smell bullshit a mile away when they're like, they start talking about it. I'm like, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I, I absolutely am capable, but I, I try to hand that off as quickly as I can. And sometimes that doesn't work. You know, sometimes you've got a client that just will not take a handoff. They're like, I know you, I don't know your, I don't know this other guy. Um, so you're still art directing, uh, accounts. Uh, Yes, sir. Wow, man. And you can't, so you've had some of these relationships for maybe 20 something years and you can't separate? Um, again, it's a small town. It's a small industry and you can, you know, I mean, some of my clients have learned to trust, um, you know, the, the people who work with me on my team. Um, but, uh, you know, I think we're all as small business owners. Um, and I've had this too. The only way that I got separated from them is they sold the company. <laughs> it was it was the two people I was talking about with. They, they, we took the client from you know like doing two hundred fifty thousand to like over ten million. So you take a small yeah. business that way, they they get married to you. Yeah. And I tried to pass it off to an account manager, and they're just they they called me up and they're like, all right, hey, look, we hate yeah. that guy. It's not right. going to happen. So it's right. either you. Or, or nothing. I was like, okay, all right. So yeah, I totally get it. Exactly. And in, in my case, um, like, like I, I'm guessing in your case as well, there's a huge risk when the, when they, when the, when the client changes hands that the new owners, the new, whoever, the new client is going to be like, nah, we need some fresh blood. Yeah. We lost them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. They sold and that was that was it. They strung us along a little bit. There was a little bit of hope and then Yeah, right, right. They're gonna give you a shot, but you know that they're they're not it. aiming for you to win. No, they're, no, they're, no. they're waiting for you to fail. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So so that's that's a you know, when when my industry goes through, you know, it goes through phases of musical chairs where one head of marketing rolls into a studio and decides to shake everything up and suddenly you got a lot of people out you know, there's blood in the water and, and people are looking for new gigs and suddenly there's a shuffle. Uh, and, you know, it's those moments that change the game for better and or worse for us. So um, when you work on a project, is it yeah. the traditional, all right, we're going to work on a brief, we're going to go in, like talk about that. Cause this is different than sure. most of the other agencies that, you know, it is, it is for sure. So uh, <clears throat> we are given the brief um, we are not, so we, I do no spec work. Uh, I do nothing for free. Um, that's the good news. Are you hourly? Is it like value? I'm not, I am not. I am, I am, um, sort of assignment and, um, phase based. So, uh, usually, uh, so, so the good news is I get paid for everything I do. The bad news is there are no agencies of record for the most part, a couple of exceptions. Um, I don't know with 150 employees, uh, I don't know where my income is coming from more than what's today. Today is Wednesday. And if I really honestly think about this, end of next week. Oh, <laughs> is as far ahead as I have work. Oh man. But that's how it's worked for 15 years. And and it's just, it is what it is. So uh, it's an interesting, you know, the idea of finding a buyer for an agency like mine, hypothetically, if I wanted an exit, very tricky, very tricky because it's hard to say, I don't have a book of business. I don't have, you know, uh, uh, accounts that are that are signed up for any length of time. And I'm the guy who's bringing them in. So, um, so I will get assigned to um, a project. I just got assigned to a TV show this morning. They need looks in a week. Um, the client comes in with their own brief that their marketing team has put together internally. Uh, we have a sort of creative broad strokes conversation. What do you think? You know, do we want to show the talent? Uh, how conceptual do we want to be, or do we want to be a little more, you know, um, I'll call it meat and potatoes, you know, 
show the show the I've got you know your your brand is the celebrity that's attached to the project, right? Um, uh, and then and then off I go, you know, and I'm building from whatever assets uh, exist. Honestly, we are you know I would put my photo my 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 creative team, my art directors are the strongest photo illustrators in the world. You know, they're just they're just we're and my industry in general, I, you know, I, I, I put my team up against anyone in my industry and I put my industry up against anything else in the world in terms of photo composition, photo illustration, use of Photoshop. You know, it's like th this is the, the A team for, for that kind of work, um, for, for, for digital painting um, and compositing and using garbage assets and creating something that looks beautiful out of it. Um, so that's what we do. We just get to work and, and, you know, brainstorm internally. Um, and I really don't do a lot of editing, uh, other than, um, making sure that they're, you know, that, that we're on brief and, and the concepts are legit. But again, I'm looking at a volume game where it's like, all right, let's, let's show them a breadth of thinking. Let's show them they gave us a box and let's show them how big that box can get. So when they come to you, um, how strict are they with their like brand guideline? Are they telling you font sizes? Are they telling you colors? Or are they expecting you to bring that? Um, that depends on the client. And I think there's a bit of a push and pull uh, at especially a lot of the streamers. Um, but it goes back to before streaming to to network and, and all this stuff. Uh, the, it tends to ebb and flow in terms of like what's more important this TV show or this show or the network or streamer that it's on. And so you'll see if you look at bus shelters as you drive around town, if you have them, um, you'll notice how the size of the, the, the call to action changes. And sometimes it's a little minimal and then sometimes it's like, uh, okay, I get it. You don't have to hammer me over the head with what, where I can find it. Um, those those are usually mandates that come from the, the the branding piece of the the studio. My client base tends to be the creative services that 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 operate for each project, and so those are two different teams. And so there again, there's a little bit of a yeah. like, all right, I did this amazing creative, and the brand team says, well, yeah, but it breaks the rules that we've set. Yeah. So and you're like, um, yeah, whatever, rule followers. <laughs> so. <laughs> Uh, well, I have a question. Do you ever yeah. get from the creative team where they say, all right, look at them. We have a really hot, fresh turd and this movie or show is going to suck and yeah. we need you to make it look like it doesn't suck. Yeah, that's where I started my career. Remember back <laughs> at the beginning of this conversation? My movie sucked. <laughs> I made it look amazing. And yeah. I love that. I have no problem. I, I have seen some unwatchable content. I mean truly bad but that's not my job my job is to is to make something gorgeous from it and i i actually love it i have no beef with with taking some content that i have no interest in in consuming what about there's so i don't there's so many movies that are coming out now because i i don't know what it is it's just i think the cost of making a movie is substantially lower because of the technology that's out there right uh, somebody with a mac and an iphone can put something up against uh you know, they can publish something is the point. But sure. are, are you having to, to work on some of those where they're just like God awful acting in these trailers and you're like, oof, man, let's just slap it together, see what happens. Some, um, yeah, I mean, that happens. And, um, you know, a project doesn't usually come to my shop unless it's got uh, some marketing budget behind it which generally also implies it got bought by a studio that's got the scale and the size to have a marketing team. Um, so it's passed several thresholds to get to the point of becoming a client of mine in general. Um, so, you know, the bar is high enough. So I've been tricked by your- and Again, it's not my problem and it's not my client's problem. It's not my client's problem. My client got handed the job too. And they're like, okay, it's my, you know, it's my, you know, and again, marketing gets blamed if it fails, but, um, 
Yeah. I've been tricked so many times with your talent, you know, just You're great welcome. looking covers and, and streaming or whatnot. <laughs> that my mm -hmm. rule now, when I select a uh, movie or anything to watch, yep. I have to recognize at least one actor. You know, so I see I see that that screen and I'm like, ooh, that looks so good. And I'm like, you are you are you are <laughs> very don't watch common. many movies. You are, no, 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 no. He's no, a commoner. No. It's you're you're very common, and I say I don't mean that like you're basic. I mean like that that is so Netflix started. Uh, you know, it was sort of the original king of data, right? Then Netflix came around and was like, we have all of this data that flows through. We we know a lot about our audience, and we can we can quantify. What do they click on? What are they more likely to? And and to your point, if you look at Netflix in particular, but everybody, they favor tight crops of cast likeness. And you look at like um, Peaky Blinders. Oh, uh, great show, show. Great show. Yeah. After The Queen's Gambit came out, if you look at the, the little thumbnail for Peaky Blinders, it's all Anya Taylor, whatever her name is who is the star of Queen's Gambit. She was not the star of Peaky Blinders, but they mm. just changed the art to be like, if you like that, check out another show she's on. Smart. Right. So they're just, they they know you yeah. because you are most of their clients and they're like, yeah, here's a photo of Nicole Kidman. You don't even know the movie because it came out five years ago and it tanked because it sucked. But it's, and and also the key art dates it, right? So if it's a poster that was up in the theater, you're like, oh yeah, that looks a little dated. But if mm. I strip it out and I just show you a photo of Nicole Kidman, and sorry, Nicole, if you're listening, it's nothing personal. Um, you know, uh, she's, yeah. Yeah, she's a huge fan. Yeah, I, see, I was I gonna say she's far and away from this podcast. <laughs> you don't know that, you don't I know disagree. that. Yeah, yeah. It's very savvy. If it's some, some bot has picked up on the words <laughs> and is uh, transmitting it to her now. Um, uh, so they'll strip out the art and just put a photo of Nicole Kidman looking young and gorgeous. And you'll be like, oh, wow, I don't know this one. And you click it and you watch it um, because it it strips away the age of of the show or the movie. Sure. But I think the one thing the streaming services made available to me was really terrible sci fi. Like it's everywhere on streaming and so but the screen like the thumbnails look awesome i'm like whoa this looks cool robots wars aliens and i click on it and i'm like i don't even i don't recognize one of those people i'm like not wasting my time because it's probably going to be garbage yep so yep yeah for sure and the algorithm knows that you click on that sci-fi stuff more often than you click on the rom-coms. So it just feeds you more and more. And it's like, it's scraping the bottom of the barrel. Like, he'll keep, he'll, he's going to keep clicking. So now uh, I'm, uh, I've got a 21 month year old and uh, all my recommend, I don't bother going to different profiles. I'm lazy. Yeah. Uh, all my recommendations are. Dude, that's so easy to do too. It's just uh, one swipe. Yeah, too tough. <laughs> too hard. Too hard. Don't care. Look at that. He's got carpal tunnel. I, I don't have kids and it's on there. I'm like, ah, what are kids watching these days? I'm like, God, no. <laughs> so I, I have, uh, do you see theaters surviving? Like what is the future of theaters? You know, uh, I, I, I do. I do. Um, I, I don't pretend to be an expert. I'm just a, an observer. Um, um, but I think, you know, I think there's still room for events. I think people still want to get out of the house and get away from their 21 month old and, uh, and have a date night and, and movies are still one of the few outlets for that. That's, that's an easy sort of impulse purchase. Um, and I, I don't see them going away. I do see, you know, same for, for a lot of the world. Personally, I, I see probably a, a change in ownership. It's already happening, uh, in my industry, um, where the people who couldn't survive COVID have to sell. Um, and you know, they've got, uh, real estate and a, and a product that they can actually, you know, offload if they couldn't survive. So there'll be new owners, there'll be new, it'll be a new 
generation maybe but, yeah I, I don't know it's i i love going to the movies and yeah i i have i don't think i've been back since since covid but yeah that's that's a fear that i have is just that that'll go away it's like it's some extinct animal because just seeing movies like uh like hateful eight in the theater where it's just so theatrical and i don't know i i just love that stuff but, yeah and i think that you're not alone and i think that they'll come back i think you know we just have to get past uh, for some of us the fear of being in an enclosed space with other people i think it's the next skating rink they still have skating rinks there's yeah they're still going to be theaters they're just not going to be as prevalent as they were 25 years ago i mean I think the future is going to be the ones that, like uh, here in uh, Jacksonville downtown, they have a really small one. It's a boutique theater, but they have a, a bar. They have bar service. They they yeah. will bring bottles of wine great. to you. Isn't that great? Yeah, that's amazing. That is an experience. Right. Correct. And those will Correct. survive. But like the big box, you know, get your popcorn for $8. Uh, and I just don't know what value they're bringing. And, and I guess I'm just shocked that, like, I absolutely loved um, – Damn it, now I can't think of that blue 3D movie of oh, Avatar, right? The experience of Avatar in the movie theater was Yeah, that's incredible. what I'm talking about. Dude, I'm yeah. shocked that we did not see a wave of 3D movies after that. We just think oh, of Alice was. in Wonderland and that was it. Nah, they did like the B movie, which Jerry Seinfeld didn't do, pull his weight in. Uh, yeah, there, I think there was quite a few uh, after that. There, there were, there were. It's, it's a wave, you know. But, but that's just it. It's like, you know, you've got to capture that lightning in a bottle with one of those, with a trick like that. You know, Avatar was so encompassing. Like I was dodging leaves. I was like, yeah. oh, I, it was great. Yeah, yeah. Even though you feel like that cool breeze comes over you in certain things, and uh, <laughs> it was no cool breeze. Done that? No, seriously, have you ever done? <laughs> they have those like, um, what is it called? Three DX. Uh, the ones the like chair moves and yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I, yeah I've fun. seen them. I, I haven't done that one yet. Yeah, it's it's fun. Have either of you gone to the Harry Potter ride in? I think it's Universal Studios. Yeah, that's that's the technology there is incredible. Wow. Wow. Oh my yeah. god, I giggled like a kid the whole time. It was incredible. Yeah, and it was you're in a chair. You're not really moving high. It feels like you're flying around, but it was very interactive with the movie. It was incredible. Wasn't like that little weird spaceship thing they used to have in the malls. Do you guys remember that? Yeah, like a screen. Screen. <laughs> little oh, yeah. screen, same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, just trying to get my my dad trying to get myself and my two brothers out of that was uh, was hilarious. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, in so far as you know, agency, what is like the most difficult thing that you've had to do? you know, in your professional career? Um, difficult thing that I've had to do. You know, I think, I think surviving the last year and a half, or at least the beginning, the, the early part of last year, you know, the, the, the second quarter, um, you know, but it's, you know, I'm not saying anything that every single person on the planet didn't go through. So, um, that was, that was challenging for us because again, uh, a chunk of our business was and is theatrical and it just, it stopped, you know? So, so dealing with how to, um, manage our longevity and our run rate, you know, and keep it going. Did you have to um, lay anybody off? Yeah, we let go of about 10% of the team. Um, we're, we're back up now, you know. Uh, we also did, uh, we, we um, had to do some salary reductions. Um, we have since uh, restored the salaries and we are um, restoring the lost salary as well. The, we're, 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 we're bonusing back um, those reductions. Good on you for uh, for making the hard decisions. Yeah, yeah. How about you guys? What's the hardest? I'm going to throw this back at you. You probably have to do it ten times <laughs> over. We you grew, tell me what, we what's the hardest 15%. thing you've ever done with your agency? What's oh. the hardest thing you've ever done with your agency? Hardest thing I've ever done with my agency, uh, besides merging with Dave. Um, <laughs> the, the hardest thing I've ever done. Yeah. No one ever throws questions back at me, Adam. Uh, yeah, I'm here to do it. I got an answer for you. All right. Yeah. And maybe I'll come up with one in the meantime. 
at a young point in my agency, um, I had about 80% of my billables with one super large client. I know it's not the ideal, but I was, I was new. I was, I'll, I'll yeah, take yeah, yeah. it. makes your business, right? Yeah. It makes you go. Um, so he came to me and he was like, hey, we've got this big push. I've got these investors. They're looking for these features. Can we double up resources? I'm mm -hmm. like, absolutely. So we double up. I go, hey, you know, that check hasn't shown up. He's like, it's in the mail. Don't worry about it. So three weeks later, I'm like, hey, that check still hasn't shown up. And he's like, oh, it's coming. Uh, I, I don't know why it didn't show up. And then the next you know, invoice gets sent out. And I'm like, hey, you know, you're, you're kind of two months behind. And then about three weeks later, I mean, he put, strung me around for three months. And then he just comes and he's like, look, we're out of money. We didn't get the investment. I can't pay you. And, um, and I'm like, uh, get, what? what you know and i've got at this time only three employees mm -hmm. and I, I just had to lie to them i lied to them that everything's fine and and we've got another project coming. so i invented a project and pretended wow. like i got specs and i had them start building it so they're busy building this thing that doesn't exist that's not real while i'm out there just hitting the streets looking for a project and i finally found one and and i, I remember coming to them going all right guys i got a new project you got to work on and they're like, what about like, this? We're still working on this one. I'm like, don't worry about that. We don't really need to worry about that. <laughs> and uh, we, we, you know, finished this one. And then the great thing is that my old client comes back and says, hey, I got investment. Here's all the money I owed you. Wow. And I want to double the retainer that we were on. And I said, no problem as long as you pay in advance from here on out. Yeah. Fool me once. Yeah. So it, it was one of those moments where I said, okay. That was my make or break moment. If I broke then, it was never meant to be. If I made it there, there's nothing that can stop me. Wow. Um, that was the hardest thing. And I mean, it was like three or four months of not taking a paycheck and not knowing where, you know, what was going on. And yeah. I got my answer. It might, it might get me into a libel suit, but we'll do it. Uh, <laughs> I love this. I love this. I'm going to be called as a character witness. <laughs> um, so uh, 2013, 2014, I think those uh, dates are right. I had a, a another business partner. We got into a dispute of of leave. He was taking some big fight ended up erupting um, because he wasn't doing his job at all. And he said, "I'm leaving for my maternity leave." And I said, "It's paternity leave, you fucking idiot." And based on that, um, he went in to our bank account and took all the money that we had out of uh, multiple accounts. And then, oh. yeah, and then we, we did a lot of, we were doing a lot of Google AdWords advertising at the time, and then he jacked up all the AdWords accounts at the time. I didn't know that either. So wow. not only just did I not have- you. Just to literally take you down. Yeah, not only did I not have any money to, to pay anybody, uh, I now had to work for free because we were doing all that work for clients, and they're like, dude, like you spent this money. Like we didn't, so surviving that was the most difficult thing. In hindsight, too, I'm like, okay, I survived it. It's great. If if somebody came to me with that same situation, I would recommend to them be like, dude, shut the whole thing down. Right. Yeah, because you'll have more hair. You'll have, it'll stay its color longer. You'll be happier. But at the end of the day, it's yeah, it's what, what, what you know. What are your minerals? What's the what are you what yeah. are you made of? And yeah. Uh, yeah, I haven't thought about that in a long time. Lots of therapy there, Adam. Appreciate you bringing it up. <laughs> well, and you've inspired me for, for two other answers uh, I can give. That, uh, I love this. Let's do it. That, um, that, that again, might might get me in some trouble. I don't know. Um, uh, one is many, many years ago, um, you know, I have two partners and um, uh, and and there's a there's you know, we do print and we do AV and digital. And those are sort of separate teams. Uh, and as we evolved, you know, you get into a bit of a territorialism as the as the technology evolves. Is print print? Well, print then animates and goes up on, you know, as the, the key art becomes something animated on the web. Well, now is it digital? you know, or something that's meant to be um, uh, a very simplistic thing based on print then suddenly evolves and now it's a trailer piece or an AV piece. Um, and so we really had to, um, 
we went around and around a lot trying to figure out how to not how to avoid territorialism between units between divisions and deliverables and we did because um we're we're all positive good people and friends um and so we we worked through it together but there was some there you know we, there there was talk of splitting up the agency oh wow um, and it got it got real you know it, it it got like how what does that look like you know um because we for a long time we just couldn't resolve it we couldn't figure out how do we avoid um you know uh that territorialism that resentment that that because we all have the same clients you see we're going back to like this one client hires me for print and my partner for av and and then suddenly comes to me and goes why don't you just handle it all and and my partner's like well dude I thought they were my client, you know. Ah, so how did you, did you guys end up breaking it up based on percentages or you just said, all right, let's just merge this thing? What does that look like? No, we, you know, honestly, um, honestly, we just sort of came to our senses, I think, and, and backed away from what could have been a fight um, and just sort of agreed that life is short and we're all in it together and, and, you know, stop short of lawyers or anything like that so we could we could stay um organic about it and stay supportive about it and because we are friends and 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 we manage to maintain it uh which i know does not happen that often and so i am grateful to them for for getting through it with me um and how long have you been partners uh, well, I have one partner on the print side. That's 15 years. And then uh, we joined up with a, a guy who is an AV expert uh, 13 years ago. Wow. So it's been it's been a minute. And my my and I, we, we've known each other since before that. So going back 20 years, we've been working together. Um, the the other challenge that is ongoing um, uh, and, and I'm sure everyone relates to this. Um, the, uh, <laughs> I'd say it. The, the, the finance and procurement departments and the, the ops departments at the clients uh, wanting you to, to explain to them how you're going to save the money if they give you more work um, or or they want a rate card and then they want you to reduce it or they they feign insult at your rates even though they've been paying those rates for the last 30 years um and and again going back to a push and pull inside the studios between creative services or the marketing departments and the finance departments and um you know I, that's that's never a fun ride to take and i've taken it with a lot of the studios over the years where you know uh there there's a consultant brought in to talk about cost savings and um and the irony or the the the, the catch 22 is that it's all creative right and 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 again we're talking in a land of maybe i'm going to be done in 30 or maybe I'm going to be done in 2,582. And so uh, you want to tell me which one you're going to pick before you assign it to me? Then I'll tell you how much it's going to cost. But it's impossible because they want to quantify everything because they're, you know, um, one hemisphere of the brain. And they're just trying to, like, put the widget into its place and, and account for it and project for it. And I'm like, that's awesome. Right up until you show it to Nicole Kidman, I'm just picking on her today. Um, I'm <laughs> holding on Nicole Kidman. I figure I'll just let me out of the car, too. Cole. Let me out of the car. Uh, um, <laughs> days you know, until right they here. show it to Nicole Kidman, and she goes, "I hate them all." You know, and now you've run up the. And again, this is not unique to my industry, but you've run it up the chain as far as it'll go with your direct client base, and then they have to feed it to talent, and talent nukes it, and now we're back to square zero. But they've already spent their budget. Now what? Yeah, and uh, so I know this. This can in in your industry, can you flip it and say that? Yeah, well, that then takes away from the the output or the growth or the uh, the response that you would get on. 
Sure, you can say that all day long and your client will say, of course, no, 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 of course. I, I just need five, just send me the five good ones. <laughs> and you're like, uh-huh, yeah, I'll just send you the five good ones. I won't bother, you know, because there's no accounting for taste, right? And, and I say that not, not uh, sarcastically, it's just everyone's got different taste. And, and I'll send, I mean, I've sent presentations that was so fucking beautiful. They were, I mean, every single one was award-winning. I mean, really, really, I, I firmly believe that. And they would come back and they'd be like, nah, it's not here. <laughs> and I've sent other ones where I'm just like, oh, here you go. Like, <laughs> uh, you, you know, you want to send it with the apology note? Oh, yeah, you're absolutely. Like, yeah. I know, like, oh. and it's they come back, like, these, are, yeah. these are amazing. And you're like, yes, they are. <laughs> they are all amazing. We're amazing. Yeah. Uh, so, um, yeah. I don't know so, what's I your plan to get out of that? Do you you have a strategy? You're gonna you could potentially use that as like a contract event, right? Yeah, yeah. We can lower the fee if you give us your next ten projects. Yeah, yeah. No, that's exactly what we do, and um, uh, that's exactly what we do, and that's what the consultants also claim. And then you you sign up on a rate card or whatever game they want to play. And then you're like, cool, where's the work? And then I go, oh, well, the work isn't our department. The work is the creative services department. So they'll be in touch when they've got something for you. And you're like, well, what? what? Because, because they, don't have, they don't have the authority to say the refinery now gets a 10 picture deal. They don't have that authority. They have the authority to say, we negotiated a new rate card. Uh, and then the client is like, cool, I'll now pay these rates for whoever I hire. Have you ever um, had the opportunity to like take points of a production? Like, yeah, don't do that. No. <laughs> but do, all right. So, what are your thoughts on speaking literally on that topic? The two hundred million dollar settlement for the oh, creator Walking of Walking Dead. Yeah, from AMC. Yeah, um, it's along those lines. That was a point game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's he's arguably. I mean, he's already worth a hundred million. Well, Frank Darabont. I mean, that's different right i mean it's an interesting thing because he it, it happened walking dead came to life because of his name right he got attached to it and they're like holy shit we've got a major league theatrical director who's gonna bring who's gonna you know and this was amc's early days right they had mad men had, had started and they had a couple other shows but they weren't i mean you know they were well on their way yeah, but bad mad men yeah yeah, but I'm trying to think what the sequence was when what came first. Because I, anyway. I think it was Mad Men, wasn't it? Yeah, I feel it like Mad Men was the big. It was Mad Men. Uh, so we we did we. By the way, the, all of those are are my agencies. Oh, uh, dude, those are gnarly awesome. posters, man. They've Thank been you. yeah, Mad Men, Breaking Bad, Walking Dead, and then a bunch that you may or may not have heard of because they didn't quite pop that way. But <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah, no, th those were those were amazing. AMC was. Uh, and those those three in particular were amazing Halo projects for us. Um, they they kind of put us on the map um, because that was sort of the early days of the golden era of of broadcast. You know where where it wasn't the networks anymore. It wasn't just HBO. It was now AMC, which was American Movie Classics, was making series that were far beyond anything that any of the networks were doing um that would stand up against hbo or showtime um and we happened to be the agency that they that they loved and they trusted and so as other networks came online with this strategy of making you know fx uh or or any of the other sort of cable nets that um that really stepped up their game and, and changed the landscape of, of what it means to be a, a series on, on broadcast. Uh, we were there to, to be the agency that kind of the, the go-to agency for a long time. And we still are, you know, we're um, still one of the heavyweights, if not the heavyweight for, for streaming um, and a lot of broadcast. So, which doesn't answer your question about point. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Points, points are not. I'm not. I'm in corporate, right? I'm not in. I'm not talent. Uh, talent. We're we're not. You you get points 
if your presence, if your involvement on a, on a project is going to make the project go, then they're like, I'll say, the only other reason to give points is if the, if the producers have no faith in the project and are like, this is a worthless piece of junk. Let's give away points instead of paying money. You know, anyone who smells money isn't going to give it away. Got it. So it's a sign. If somebody's giving away points, you're like, nah, okay, all right. Run away. And generally, if someone's giving away points, um, they're the filmmakers themselves, right? They're the production company and the filmmakers. Those aren't my clients. My clients are the, distribu the distributors uh, that have marketing budgets, that have the budgets to pay me. Um, I do have filmmakers who come to me uh, frequently um, saying that they you know, they've got a post, they've got a movie that they've got that's hot that they'd love a poster for. And I usually try to dissuade them for a couple of reasons. Um, that's the moment where you're selling to a distributor, you're trying to find a distribution. So your target market for that campaign for that brand is like 20 people. Mm. You're not selling to the public. Um, you're trying to find those 20 buyers of product out there. Um, so the value on that brand is low. Like, you know, th and, and the buyers are savvy enough that they don't need a great poster to buy the project. They're going to actually look at the project and decide whether they want to buy it or not. And when they do buy it, they've got a marketing department who's paid to say, whatever you did sucks, we're going to redo it. Um, so it's usually a waste of precious money for the filmmakers. You know, they want to put all their dollars on the screen. Um, yeah. So do you work directly with actors? My interface with actors is usually on a photo shoot. So, um, you know, you guys asked about process at one point. Um, you know, there's sort of divergent paths at the first, the first steps onto a job for us. Um, uh, if they've already shot the film and, uh, they aren't going to have a photo shoot because the cast is dispersed and it's gone, um, then we'll just go straight to building comps. We'll just go straight to give us all the assets you have and we'll get to work and we'll give you posters. Um, if they have the budget, if they have the time, if they own the project up front and so they can get going on the marketing before or during production, then we may have a photo shoot. Uh, then my first step is sketches. And so we hire an illustrator and we start ideating and, and come up with a, a pitch deck that's usually sketch based. Um, and uh, then they'll take the winning uh, concepts and they'll take them to talent and we'll do a photo shoot. So that is when I would interface with talent and I would, I, I'm usually art directing. Um, so I'll, I'll go to that photo shoot and be the director at that photo shoot. Who's the nicest actor or actress you worked with? Um, you know, I, I I'm going to give the politically correct version. Um, <laughs> they're all professionals. They may be, <laughs> they may not want to be there with me. In other words, I, I'm not there to be their friend. They know it. I know it. It's a working day. And I actually feel bad for them because they're being, you know, they've been working with a director on this project for weeks, months, years. And now it's a, it's a publicity shoot day or marketing shoot day. And so they, they, you know, we, we bring in, um, you know, a, a successful celebrity photographer or someone who's done this before and has a reputation uh, and gets paid a lot of money. And so there's there's um, uh, there's a gravitas that comes with we've spent a, the studio has spent a lot of money to put all this together. Your job, actor, or actress is to, you know, do your piece and and give them some energy or performance. And then suddenly, wait, who's Adam? Like, what? What are you doing? What, <laughs> what are you telling me? Huh? You know, and so, you know, I'm as much as it's my it's my job to get the materials out of them so that I have material to work on. The setup is never great with talent. You know, you're always like it's a little contentious. Uh, having said that, 
they are all professionals and with very rare exceptions that I will not name, uh, they are all, they all bring it. They all know how to do the job and they all, you know, they may be like, fuck you. And then like, <laughs> you know, they know what I want. And so and so they, you know they they do it and and so when people are like oh are you friends with someone you know I'm really not um and you know I can say I've interacted with with you know a listers but um you know I don't I don't pretend to be friends you're with get starstruck any of them are just like oh man I'm sitting here with Jack Nicholson um Yes and no. I bottle it up pretty well, but yeah, I, I geek out. You know, it's it's fun. It's a, definitely a fun part of the job to say I did that. Right. I was there. I was the one who told them to do this or that. <laughs> I told him so. Yeah, exactly. He did it because I told him so. <laughs> My uh, last Nicole, question. I didn't tell you what to do. Nicole. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> My last question for you is: yeah. um, What is your favorite? poster that you had nothing to do with um it's a bunch you know uh i just participated in um uh sort of a, a the the old codgers club in my industry um doing the 50 greatest posters or most impactful posters of all time um uh and I mean, there's some great ones uh, in different eras. I think um, something like Alien or Jaws, the Jaws poster just holds up. It just does. Um, ironically, Maybe. that one in particular uh, was the book cover. And they just uh. repurposed it for the poster. Um, uh, I think, you know, cl there are other classics like Rosemary's Baby or um, uh, Clockwork Orange um recent ones you know I, I think there are some inventive if not totally original but inventive solutions to things like cabin in the woods where it's a rubik's cube house that's fun mm. um uh there are a lot out there there's a lot there's, there's you know I, best movie trailer ever there's one a recent one if you and and a lot of movie trailers are about sound design. They really are, you know, they're little music videos in some ways or mm -hmm. you know, it's really um and I actually finally just watched it recently. Uh Judas and the Black Messiah. If you check out that trailer, it's a badass trailer. Um I think I've seen that. All in the sound design and and it just, you know, um a lot of the Christopher Nolan stuff uh trailer-wise is is again like if you just listen to the sound and what's happening there like the who's the sound guy that would De dennis villeneuve or whatever like sicario and arrival like ah oh, dude that was just yeah. insane like a patented yeah. sound that just ooh, that yeah color. exactly uh, uh, grant on all right so is there anything we didn't cover today that you think the world should know um no I think I think you know I, again it's it's been a fascinating uh, journey for me to be more. Uh, I have a, a peer group, um, uh, Kevin, who you you interviewed recently. Kevin Hergen, we got to give a shout out to Kevin. That's we yeah. got to give a shout out to Kevin. He connected us. Um, you know, uh, I, I'm in a peer group with him, um, and and it's been amazing for me, and I'm I'm still just fascinated and envious of sort of the other side of the, the, the advertising wall uh, that, you know, your, most of your um, listeners uh, live in. And then there's part of me that's just thankful that I don't live in it because <laughs> I am in a very closed loop ecosystem where I know all of my clients and either they give me work or they don't. And if they don't, I know I'm cooked and I'm done. And if they do, then I've got a going concern. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I think we're good. You remind me of something based on like your lineage and where you've come and it, it's right. a compliment. It's, you know, it's not what you can do. It's what you have done and you've done an amazing body of work. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I would contradict that though and say all of my clients are, would, would, 
don't care and what have you done lately? And, and I live in the immediate now every day uh, where my reputation can die like that. And I have no sort of longevity or stability. It's a very, you know, my stability is because I deliver good work every time. And if I don't deliver good work, I'm done. Isn't that Hollywood, baby? Right? You get Apparently it is. Apparently it is. You go to director's is. jail. You got, you know, a bad yeah. movie. You do two that's in a row. It. You're no longer You're a director. You're done. And that's it. You know, again, going back to uh, I'm glad I live in a closed loop where I don't have to hunt for my next meal. But at the same time, I have no I have no alternative if, if I alienate, you know, a, a certain number of clients within my industry, I can't go find new ones. You know, I'm, I'm in a very closed loop. So, but I, I take clients. Compliment and thank you. <laughs> but speaking of new clients, how can people get a hold of you? Um, the refinery creative.com is our website. Uh, I'm Adam at, if you want to shoot me an email, uh, most of my social, although I am really not active in social, uh, is refined Adam only because of the company name, not because I wear nice t-shirts. Um, uh, so that's it. Yeah. Feel free to reach out. I'm, I'd be happy to, uh, to answer any other questions or just get connected to, to more folks. I'm always looking to increase my network and make new friends. Awesome. Adam, thank you so much for joining us, man. Thank you guys very much. Appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed our episode. Please subscribe and review wherever you can. And if you would like to join the Digital Mastermind, go ahead and shoot me an email at john, J-O-N, at digitalmastermind.com or visit us at digitalmastermind.com. We'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye now.